I'm Chad, and today's video is brought to you in virtual reality. That's right, this entire video has been generated through my virtual computer simulation that simulates in high detail the real world in which we live. If you've watched other videos I've produced, you may be familiar with virtual reality in that it is a place where we can go fast and more importantly, a place without rules, where if we want to accelerate rapidly and make a sweet symphony, we can do that. And if we want to get the front wheel of our motorcycle off the ground, we can do that as well without fear of repercussion. And that's going to be very important in today's video, because we are talking about wheelie control. We're going to cover a few topics all pertaining to wheelie control. First, I'm going to give you a brief history on wheelie control and its availability and functionality over the years. Next, I'm going to explain how Aprilia wheelie control on my 2017 Aprilia Tuono V4 1100 factory works, as well as many other motorcycles that have available wheelie control systems. I'm going to demonstrate how it works. And finally, I'm going to talk a little bit about how it differs between models and manufacturers of different types of motorcycles. So let's begin. Within the last 10 to 15 years, we've seen many high-performance motorcycles receive impressive suites of electronic rider aids to not only help a rider be safer on the bike, but also faster. So before that period of time, rider aids were fairly rudimentary in what they could do and how they worked. There was some virtual wheelie control kicking in for just a second. Wasn't a big one, but did get a little bit of front end float there over a bump. So way back when in the infancy of motorcycle electronics, there were some systems in which wheelie control was actually kind of a byproduct of traction control. Now a very basic system would have two wheel speed sensors, one on the front wheel, one on the rear wheel, and that system would measure the rotational speeds of each wheel. and when the two wheels were out of sync beyond a preset parameter and limit, this would cause the system to intervene and reduce the amount of power that the engine was producing. So there was a fundamental problem with this, and that is when you just have that basic little bit of information, a wheelie can also look like a rear end slide to a computer. If all you're going off of is the throttle position and engine speed and the difference in rotational speed between the front wheel and the rear wheel, when the rear end of the bike starts to slide, the rear wheel is spinning faster than the front wheel. At the same time, if you're doing a wheelie, there is no force of the road working against the front wheel to keep it spinning. So the front wheel will, again, be rotating at a slower rate than the rear wheel. And there was no way for a motorcycle to really differentiate between a rear end slide and a wheelie. So those systems would treat both of those circumstances very similarly, which in many cases isn't super desirable. And that challenge brought about the introduction of the inertial measurement unit or IMU. The purpose of an IMU is to help the bike understand its location in space. And this is done by measuring different axes of direction. Now I'm just gonna give you a little bit of context about this machine because I've struggled to find clarity on the kind of IMU that it has. While most manufacturers refer to inertial measurement units on motorcycles as six axes, it is my understanding that not all inertial measurement units are this way. And there is some debate online as to whether or not the 2017 Tuono V4 and RS V4 have a five axis or a six axis inertial measurement unit. But I did find a part number online for the IMU on af1racing.com that clearly denotes that it is a six axis unit and that it is applicable to all 2017 to 2020 Tuono V4s and RS V4s. So under that assumption, this motorcycle has a six axis IMU that measures roll, pitch, and yaw. Roll being the amount of lean angle the motorcycle has, pitch being the upward or downward direction of the motorcycle, and yaw, which direction it is facing left to right and at what angle. So the IMU enables the bike to understand where it is in space and adds an incredible amount of color 
to the data that the bike receives to make the best decisions it can on how to help you ride faster and safer. The 210 V4 and RS V4 are equipped with APRC, short for Aprilia Performance Ride Control, and APRC works through a few different sensors. The IMU, which we just talked about, two wheel speed sensors on the motorcycle, one on the front wheel and one on the rear wheel. Each of those sensors measures a wheel speed ring that is on each of the wheels of the motorcycle. There are gaps in those rings and by measuring those gaps, the bike can determine how fast each wheel is spinning and compare the two values to determine what is going on. In addition to that, the system is further integrated into the bike's electronics in the sense that there is a ride-by-wire throttle. So rather than having steel cables that run to the throttle bodies and are actuated as you turn the throttle mechanically, there's actually a chipset in here connected to the throttle tube and an electrical wire that runs back to the ECU. So when you open the throttle, this sends a signal to the bike and lets it know to actuate the servo motor that is attached to the throttle bodies. And this movement opens the throttle bodies accordingly. Obviously the bike gets all the other information that is just measured such as engine speed, gear position, load, so on and so forth. And in addition to that, there is a brake pressure sensor. Although that's the only mention that I will make of that system because for the intents and purposes of this video, it really isn't relevant. It just enables the cornering ABS system. So the bike is constantly measuring all of the data that is collected by these various sensors on the motorcycle and comparing them to values that are associated with the parameters you have set for it, i.e. the rider aid levels. So adjusting these is pretty straightforward on the motorcycle. Wheelie control specifically on the Tuono can be adjusted two different ways. The first way is to come to a stop and use the joystick that is on the left handlebar switch set to navigate down to the AWC setting on the main menu. You select that and then you can toggle the joystick up to increase the level of wheelie control or down to decrease it. There are three settings of wheelie control with three being the most invasive, one being the least invasive, and you can disable the system entirely by holding the joystick down for a few seconds when this already set to one. Alternatively, the Tuono V4 and RSV4 2017 to 2020 give you the option to adjust wheelie control on the fly. This is enabled by going into the bike's deeper menu and reconfiguring the multifunctional switch that is on the left handlebar switch set to enable wheelie control. I generally ride around with it set for cruise control, but if I'm at the racetrack, I'm feeling brave, which I haven't yet, but one day may, I can reconfigure this switch so that I can have wheelie control on while I'm going through some of the faster corners, but then want to come out onto the front street where I have a good amount of room to just pop a wheelie and, uh, you know, stand up and ride it out and feel like I'm Valentino Rossi. But I can't do that yet. So that switch when configured that way, it behaves exactly the same way. You press the switch up to increase wheelie control, down to decrease it, and when you have setting one selected, you can simply hold it down for a few seconds that will disable wheelie control entirely. Another cool thing with this whole IMU enabled ride control system is that you can disable wheelie control while still having traction control enabled. And this is again due to the fact that the bike has all of those different measurements. It knows what your lean angle is as well as your pitch and your yaw and it can differentiate between a wheelie and a rear end slide and based on all that data, make the best decision that it can to give you the most control it can. So now that we understand the systems, let me walk you through a use case. You're going to accelerate and you're in a low gear. You're a little bit greedy with the throttle. The front wheel starts to come off the ground. Now because of all the data from the various sensors, the bike knows that one, your vertical angle has increased. Two, the front wheel is starting to rotate at a slower rate than the rear wheel. And three, how much throttle you're giving the motorcycle in addition to its engine speed and gear position. So based on all of that data, it can very, 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 very quickly determine how much assistance it needs to provide to bring the wheel back down to the ground within the pre-programmed conditions and parameters that you have set in the APRC menu. Now it does this by adjusting the ignition timing as well as physically altering the position of the throttle bodies. 
thus reducing the amount of power that the engine is producing, bringing your front wheel back in contact with the road. So to demonstrate how this works, I'm going to slow down and downshift all the way to first gear because I'm confident this will give me a very easy wheelie. I'm going to cover the rear brake a little bit just because I'm paranoid and I'm just going to whack the throttle. Whee! It's quite fun. So as you saw there, the front wheel did come off the ground and I did not change my throttle position really at all. The bike let me have about a second of hang time and then brought the front wheel back down fairly smoothly. So not only does wheelie control intervene when you're just whacking the throttle hard in first gear, but it will also intervene when you're rolling on the throttle hard and smooth in first, second. I've even experienced wheelie control in third gear. So when you start to initiate a power wheelie, depending on the conditions, how you're working the throttle and everything, it'll give you some amount of hang time, never more than a second or two in my uh, experience before it brings you back in line. It will continue to intervene over and over again as the front wheel comes back down unless you change your inputs to better accommodate the system. And wheelie control will intervene regardless of how you initiate your wheelie. With the system enabled, whether you're doing a power wheelie or a clutch up wheelie, wheelie control will bring you back down to the ground. And in a lot of cases, the lights will flash on the dash to let you know that wheelie control is intervening. And again, it's a fairly smooth system. It's definitely smoother than if you were to just chop the throttle yourself. But at the same time, I'd really call it more of an anti-wheelie than actual wheelie control. I feel like wheelie control insinuates that this bike is going to actively manage a lasting wheelie for you. Whereas in this case, yeah, it'll let you get the front wheel off the ground, but you're not going to be able to sustain that wheelie. Something else to note is that when wheelie control does intervene, it does not stop you from accelerating entirely. Obviously, because it's reducing power, you're not going to continue to accelerate at the same rate that you were, but you will continue to. It is going to work to do its best to keep your drive in a forward direction rather than a vertical one. But the system intervening will ultimately slow you down just a little bit. Another thing to note is this is really more of a rider aid to help with acceleration and performance on a racetrack as well as to keep you safer. So I would not go out on your 210 before or RS before and try to 12 o'clock it and have wheelie control save you. It does say in the owner's manual that there are certain scenarios that even APRC does not have the capability to act quickly enough upon. So just keep that in mind. Do not be decelerating in first gear at 9,000 RPM completely off throttle and pin it. Probably won't end well. But if you want to get a little fun with power, you can do that too. So, how does Aprilia wheelie control differ from other wheelie control systems such as those found on Ducati motorcycles or the Yamaha R1? And there are differences between all of these bikes. In some cases it's hardware, in a lot of cases it's software, in some cases it's both. The APRC system that is on the Tuono V4 that enables wheelie control gets all of its data from Bosch sensors. So it has a Bosch IMU, Bosch wheel speed sensors, and some other Bosch programming pertaining to Again, the corner and ABS system and so on and so forth. Where it is my understanding that Yamaha's wheelie control systems as well as their entire electronics package tends to work a lot better than this generation of the 210 and RS before did. It's mostly developed in-house and pulls a bit more directly from Yamaha's MotoGP experience and racing program. So the information that they have to build that system is a little bit better than what Aprilia was working with. So I've actually seen many videos on YouTube as you probably have of R1s doing some pretty controlled wheelies on the power holding the front wheel off the ground for more than a second or two and from the looks of it bringing the wheel back down a little bit more smoothly than this bike as well but all these systems generally rely upon similar electronics they're all enabled by inertial measurement units combined with wheel speed sensors, led by wire throttles, and just your more cutting edge modern motorcycle electronic systems. Not all are created equal, but in their high level workings, they are all very similar. And with that, I think it's time to wrap up today's video. 
thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, I'd appreciate it if you give me a gentle little click of the like button. I would really appreciate that. It helps me out and helps get my videos recommended so I can share this assumed motorcycling knowledge with the rest of the internet. I really enjoy making these videos and enjoy the discussions that go on around them. So drop a comment below. It does keep me motivated to continue producing the finest mediocre motorcycling content that YouTube has to offer. If you have a question related to how these systems work, I'd be happy to answer it to the best of my ability. If there's something I missed in the video, feel free to drop that below as well. Please consider subscribing if you'd like to see more motorcycling content similar to this. In addition to my 210V4 factory, I also have a 2012 Triumph Daytona 675R that is a dedicated race bike and track bike, fully prepped for club racing, and I am actively running it in the California Road Race Association Series, or CRA, competing at an amateur level. I also have a 2009 Yamaha WR250X, which I am using to actually try to learn how to wheelie, so maybe one day I can turn the wheelie control off of this thing and be a little bit braver and look more badass and skilled. And if you do subscribe, I'm producing content with all of those bikes as well. Be sure to turn that notification bell on. Get notified every time I post a new video. Posting at least one video a week, usually two. So, doing my best to help keep you entertained. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your week, and we'll hope to catch you in the next one. Until then, later.